Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're gonna um, we're gonna add some code that will uh, verify our pass points if they've already been set. So at the moment, when our application starts up, we see a screen which asks the user to enter a set of pass points, which is is going to be the points that they want to touch in order to gain access to the application in future. Um, but what we want is if they've already done that once, next time the application starts up, we don't want to see this dialog that says create your pass point sequence. We just want to present them with the image and then they have to touch the right points on the image to unlock the application. Now I have a confession to make at this point and I have to explain something which is that the original version of this video that I created was pretty confusing. Uh, because there's no, um, there aren't too many new Android concepts in this video, uh, originally I just implemented it and then in this video I said, uh, here's what I've done and you can try to do that yourself. And lots of people said to me that that was really confusing because, um, partly because, uh, a lot of people like to type in the code as they go along and uh, you can't know if what you're typing is going to be um, is going to match the final project or not unless I explain it in some detail and indeed I, I watched the original of this video myself and it was extremely confusing even for me so apologies for that um, unfortunately I made a, a big mistake when I recorded these videos originally which is that I didn't save every step step of development as I went along. Uh, you've got the final source code, but I didn't save the workspace that went with every particular video. Fortunately, Nathan Hasout, and I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly, Nathan, emailed me his code that he'd entered up, up to um, lecture 24 uh, and asked me to redo 25 based on his code, which I'm very happy to do and I, I really should have done it a long time ago. So what I did was I took Nathan's code which I've got here from lecture 24 and I'm going to upload that to lecture 24 so you can check it if you want. I reconstructed what I originally did in this video which was uh, a lot of code and originally I did that offline and just explained it much too briefly in this video. And uh, so, so I, I reconstructed all that stuff and now in this video, I'm going to go through it line by line, but I'm going to refer to the stuff that I reconstructed so that I don't go typing something that's uh, different to what I've got in the final project. Now, this is going to be a very long video, and I'm going to record it in three parts and then splice them together so subsequent video numbers don't get out of order. But you, you might want to tackle this bit by bit. I'm going to kind of announce part one, part two, part three, but they're all going to be ultimately in this one video so it's going to be pretty long and uh, I'll, I'll supply you with the workspaces that go with this video as well so um, this now is part one and what we're going to do in part one of this video is um, I'm going to make it so that we've got some preferences which are saved when the user stores a set of pass points so when they get this dialog and they click OK and they press four points at that point, not only are we going to save those points, but we're also going to save some preferences to the database so that we know that, um, that we previously saved a set of pass points. And therefore, next time the application starts up, we check those preferences and uh, we find that a Boolean value has been saved and we know that we don't have to ask them to store the pass points again. We know that we just need to present them with this image and they have to press the right points to unlock the application. So what we need are, are some shared preferences. Let's go to our source here and uh, let's go to um, image activity here. And if I scroll down here, then in uh, points collected, so this code will run, you'll recall, when we've collected four points. And this is actually saving those points to the database. Now there's actually a bug in this which I'm going to fix before I go any further because if we look at point collector, uh, what I was doing originally was um, I we, we collect the points 
and then we do point stop clear immediately. I'm not really sure what I was thinking of when I wrote that. I can hardly believe it's there, but if we collect the points and then clear them immediately, um, how can we save them to the database? I I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but if that line's there, is there, you need to get rid of it because that's, that's just a mistake. Uh, we need to collect the points and we need to clear this list of points only after we've saved them. So what I'll do here is I'll give it, I'll give this a method called uh, public void clear. And in this method, we'll do points dot clear. So let's save that. So that, that allows us to clear the list of points that we've collected at the moment. But we, we only need to call this method after we've saved those points. Calling it earlier is useless. So let's go back to image activity now. And uh, in uh, on post execute. So in my points collected method, after we've done the, the kind of body of this async task in doing background, after that, on post execute will be called, and that's where we're dismissing the dialogue. And we can also in there say point collector. Um, we can say, uh, yeah, what do I call it? Points dot clear. Yeah, point collector. So we can say point collector dot clear. Call that method, and uh, and then the point collector is ready to collect another set of points, which we need it to do in future. So hopefully now we should be saving these points. And actually, I'm just going to put a little check in here. We've got this debug, ta debug tag here, this debug output saying point saved. Let's just also there output the number of points in a list because I just want to double check this. So we'll say here points dot size. So the, the points that have been collected by the point collector which are supplied to this method, we just want to check that we have indeed got four of them at that point. Okay, so now in on post execute, now we need to put that code in to save a preference to say that we've now saved those points. So I'll need a, a, a string constant key, which will be the key for those preferences. So I'm going to go to the top of um, image activity here and I'm going to create a private static final string and I'll call that pass word underscore set equals and we can just put it equal to password set. I should really call it pass point set but this is what I called it when I coded this originally so I'll follow that again because I want to keep this in sync with um, with the end final result here the final project at the end and um, yeah, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I, I don't think I've just mentioned this. My memory is like a sieve these days, but I'm also working on a Mac now. It's like a year since I originally recorded this video and I've got a Mac here. So things look a little bit different. And uh, in case you're interested, I have to say in installing the SDK on a Mac was much easier than installing, uh, installing it on my 200 euro laptop that I was previously using to create this course. And programming on the Mac really is a joy, so I can recommend it. If you've got the cash and you're serious about programming, um, it's definitely worth getting a Mac, though you, you can't really do Windows stuff on it, of course. Okay, so um, we've got that key now. Let's just copy it. And I'm going to go down here to the on post execute method of my points collected um, method. So the on post execute method of my async task here in points collected. And um, I'm going to declare a shared preferences. We'll call it prefs and set it equal to get preferences and the mode is going to be mode underscore private and uh, I need an editor to edit these prefs so I'm going to say shared preferences dot editor I'll call that editor equals prefs dot edit and let's say editor editor dot put boolean with the key that I just created, password set, and the value true. So we just want to record a Boolean flag to say that we've saved these preferences, and then I need to do editor.commit. So now we've done that, um, there are a couple of places where we need to check these preferences and take different actions depending on whether this value has been set or not. Firstly, if we go to the top of the application here, what we're doing at the moment is we're showing a prompt to say to the user, please 
create your passpoint sequence. I'm going to change the name of this method actually. In fact, I'll just refer to what I called it the first time that I coded this because I, I want to make sure that I don't tell you anything different. So this is my reconstructed code. And uh, yeah, I renamed this method to show set pass points prompt. Okay. So I'm going to right click show prompt here and go to refactor rename and show set pass points prompt which uh, is a much better name it's much more descriptive uh, so and then here in the in the on create method of image activity I can say shared preferences prefs equals get preferences mode private mode underscore private and I can get that boolean value so boolean uh, pass points set equals prefs dot get boolean and the key is this password set here and the default value is going to be false so if that preference doesn't exist it means the pass points haven't been set and therefore we want this boolean to be false and we're going to check that and then show this dialog saying set your pass points so then we can say if not pass point set Then, let's get the right kind of bracket in here. Then show pass points prompt. And, uh, and if they have been set, we don't want to show that dialog. We, we just want to present them with an image which they understand. They have to press the right points on this special image in order to unlock the application. I'm going to copy this stuff here that gets the preference because we need to use it further down as well. So let's scroll down here, right to the bottom. And um, in fact, yeah, I need to create a new method here. I'm going to create a, I'm going to type a couple of method stubs. And one of them is going to be, let's say, private void save pass points. And that's going to take the final list of points. And I'm going to put all my saving code in here for reasons that you'll see in just a second. And I'm going to create another method, private void verify pass points, which also takes a final list of points. And what this is going to do is it's going to check the points that the user just entered against the ones that we've stored in the database. And it's going to decide on, on the basis of those points whether to let them into the application or not. So this save pass points, I'm going to take all the code from points collected. I'm just going to cut it out of points collected and I'm going to paste it into save pass points. So we've got save pass points and that's got all the saving code in it. Now this points collected, you'll recall, is going to be run whenever the user has touched four points. So the point collector runs this um, because uh, via the kind of um, observer pattern, we've got this set listener and it runs this method when it's collected four points. So it's going to run this. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, let's paste in that code. Whoops, I'm going to have to copy it again, actually. I'm going to copy this code that gets the Boolean preference to say whether the pass points have been saved or not. And I'm going to scroll down here and put it in points collected. And now we're going to say if not uh, pass point set. So if they haven't been set, then we need to call save pass points and pass it the list of points that's been collected. So we only run this method when we've collected four points, and that's either going to be because we want to save them, or else if they if they um, have been set already, we need to just say verify pass points. And this is going to decide whether to get let the user into the application or not. So let's save that and uh, I'm just going to put some debug in here. I'm going to say log.d main activity dot debug tag and uh, we'll say saving pass points dot 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 and I'm going to copy that and 
here, let's have very fine pass points so we can see if this is working correctly, very fine pass points. Now I'm going to run this application and we'll see how the behavior of it is different to before. So I'll click the application and click run. And uh, if I look at the console down here, then um, it's starting. So now we should see that dialog that asks us to save some pass points. Hopefully, let's just check, is it actually starting? I think it is, I'm gonna try that again. I'll select the project, click run. And uh, now it definitely says starting. So where is my dialog? Well, I think um, it's possible that um, I've got some preferences saved from when I tried this previously. Well, in that case, this is a good place to show you how to clear save preferences. If you go to DDMS and um, you go to file the File Explorer tab here and uh, navigate to Data, so you see this massive list of folders, navigate to Data, Data, and the package name for your application which is com.caverprogramming.android.notescroll in this case, shared preferences folder, and then here's an XML file, and that's where your preferences are stored. And I'm just gonna, uh, where they're stored, sorry. And I'm just gonna click this uh, red delete button in the upper right here to get rid of those preferences. And the reason they're that they are there is because I've, I've run this previously on this computer, which is my mistake. So let's go back to this again and um, let's go back to Eclipse, back to the Java tab. And I'm just gonna do a project clean to make sure that we do run the project from scratch. Select the project and click run. This time, hopefully, we're gonna see that dialogue come up. So in the, ne in the uh, kind of next tutorials, I'm gonna probably want to clear those preferences again. And that's a, a much easier way to do it than uninstalling your application or restarting the emulator or something. Here's the dialog, let's click OK. And uh, before I do anything, let's go to Logcat in Eclipse and click uh, click my debug tag. And yeah, just make sure it's clear so it is, otherwise I would clear it with this button here. So I'll, I'll tick four points, I'll press four points. So one, two, three, four, and it should say storing. And uh, I don't see any debug stuff here. That's weird. Let's try this one. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Yeah, so it didn't come out down there. I don't know why that is, but um, anyway, uh, it, we are getting debug, which is the main thing. And um, it says saving pass points, and it says point save four. So we know that we've hopefully saved those points. Let's, let's see what happens if I now run these again. Well, if I just tick any four, if I click any four points, basically, and we'll look at Eclipse. And the second time it says verifying pass points. So what's happened now is we've gone into this code because we've saved that preference instead of this code. Um, let's, uh, let's just run this one last time from scratch. So I'm gonna to go to project clean and I'm not gonna delete the preferences this time because I, I just wanna see what happens if we start this application up again. I'm gonna click run and uh, so this time we shouldn't see the dialogue that asks you to save your pass points. We're just presented with this image. And the idea is now that the user presses the right four points and it's kind of like a secret thing. And then it will, it will unlock the rest of the application, except at the moment, it's just gonna say verifying pass points. Okay, so um, that's it for this part of the tutorial. And uh, we're gonna go immediately on to part two so um, I'm not going to say happy coding as usual because I'm going to splice the next video with this one and you can just keep watching. Hello, this is John again. And uh, well, for me, it's the start of a new video, but I'm going to splice this with the last one. So if you, you'll be continuing the last one, I guess. And uh, what we're going to look at here is returning values from async tasks because uh, let's take a look at the code here. So I've created a new workspace, which I'll also upload with this video, um, which is just a copy of the code that we created last time. I'm gonna to go to image activity, and now we've got to implement this 
verify passpoints method. And because this is saving to the database and because we want it to show and then dismiss the dialog, uh, again, I'm going to use an async task to run code in the background and to give the GUI a chance to actually display the dialog. So I'm going to refer to the code that I've um, previously implemented. So I've, I've previously implemented all of this because I don't want to um, show you something different to what's in the final application, as I explained earlier. So let's just check. And uh, if I go here to verify pass points, let's take a look. So the first thing we need to do is create a builder. So uh, create a dialog using a dialog builder. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say here, alert dialog. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, alert dialog dot builder. Builder equals new alert dialog dot builder. And I pass it um, a reference to the context here. And uh, we need to, yeah, we, we just need a message in this dialog checking pass points. I, I just want it to tell the user that um, the application is doing is actually doing something. Let's say builder dot uh, set message, set message, um, checking pass points. And we, we could put this in our strings file later on as well, but I'll just type it out here for the moment. And then, of course, we just need to create the dialog and show it. So let's say here, builder.create dialog, and that returns an alert dialog. Builder.create, sorry, alert dialog dlg equals builder.create and dlg.show. Now, once, once we've done this, we, we can launch into our asynchronous task so uh, I need a new async task here with the type async task and uh, for the first two parameters I'm going to type void but for the third one I'm going to type boolean and the reason for that I'll explain in a minute but basically it allows us to get a value back from our background process into the main application out of from from out of that thread so um, let's let's say here uh, I'll call it task, task equals new async task. And Eclipse is automatically filled in Boolean for the third parameter here for me. And I'm gonna open a curly bracket there and uh, we close it down here. And let's put a semicolon in as well. And I'll click the error and go to add unimplemented methods. And you'll notice now that doing background returns a Boolean value. And for the moment, let's just return false. Now what is that for? Well, let's um, put the cursor down here and right click and go to source override implement methods and I'm going to override the on post execute method as we did previously when we were saving the pass points. And the difference is now that this now takes a parameter with the boolean type and whatever we return here from our background process we receive here in on post execute. And you'll recall that we can't actually, um, I think I mentioned this before, that we can't actually update the GUI in our background thread here. We can't touch the GUI in doing background. We can only implement background stuff like saving to a database, for example. But we can change the GUI in on post execute. So in here, we can say DLG dot dismiss except that um, this is going to have to be final because we can't refer to non-final local variables within a method of an anonymous class so I need to change this here to final and that of course is why these points are final as well so whoops not there that's the wrong place where we declare it I need to say final alert dialog and then we can refer to it down here the error goes away so we're going to run some code in doing background that gets the existing set of pass points out of the database and compares them with the new set that the user has just clicked on. And it says, um, 
either yes they match in which case we return true or else no they don't match in which case we return false so in on post execute here let's look at the stuff that i implemented previously which is what's in the final app then um, in my on post execute method at that point we can either start a new main activity or display a toast saying access denied so let's go ahead and do that and I, I also can clear the set of collected points, which red is the point collector to collect a new set of points. So let's say here point collector dot clear. So, um, so at this point, we've either verified the points that the user has entered. Yes, they've entered the right points and we should let them into the application or else we've determined that they've entered the wrong set of points. And in, in either case, we want to um, clear out this point collector so that it's, um, it's ready for use in future. Um, so here we can say, let's, let's change result to, I think I called it pass, let's check. Yeah, pass. Let's, let's call it pass and I'm going to say if pass, then we can start a new main activity and let them into the now uh, newly unlocked portion of the application. So I say intent i equals, whoops, equals new intent. And uh, I pass it the context here. And um, let me check because, you know, it's like a year since I did a whole lot of Android programming and it is going out of my head. So yeah, so in fact, we can't pass it this because we're in a method of an anonymous class. We need to say image activity dot this otherwise this would refer to the async task anonymous class that we're in and the class that I want to la launch is main activity dot class and then we can say um, let's add the import for intent and I can say uh, let's just check here so yeah all I need to do is say um, start activity actually so it's pretty simple let's say start whoops start activity start act activity my brain can just about handle um, <laughs> coding things from scratch uh, sometimes I have to look up stuff before tutorials but if I have to type the exact same thing again I really can't do it which is why I have to refer to this stuff now uh, so otherwise we'll, we'll just output a toast here and we'll just say access denied with um, uh, like a, a long length so yeah, did I type? Yeah, I said if pass equals true. Um, let's say if pass equals true, just to make it a, a little bit clearer. Well, it's, it's Boolean, so we don't actually need equals true. But So in other words, if, if doing background determines that the user should be let in to the next part of the application, this doing background is going to return true, which would come through here as true, which will be true here, and we'll start the main activity else it's going to return false and we'll have false here for pass and in that case we're going to say toast.make text context is um, image activity dot this the text is going to be let's say access denied or you could say something uh, a bit more wordy if you prefer and uh, the duration is going to be toast.length long and we need to say dot show to show the toast. Okay, so I think that looks good. Now, if I run this now, what should happen is that it's gonna say access denied every time. Let's try it. So uh, let's go to my, I need to get the right project here. So that's 25.2 now, we're on part two of video 25. And I'm gonna just select that and run it and let's take a look at the um, emulator here. So now, um, wait, I forgot something, didn't I? I forgot to execute this task, let's do that. So down here, we need to say task.execute with no parameters. And uh, I'll save this. Okay, let's try again. So select the project and click run, and we'll take a look at the emulator so now because I'm returning false here, 
this is always going to be false because this is this is just this, and uh, we should always therefore do this rather than this. Let's check it. So I'll touch um, four points. It's not going to matter which four. And it says access denied down there. And uh, now at this point, I've cleared the list of pass points. So it's ready to collect four more. And again, it says access denied. On the other hand, if we return true here, then this is going to be true. And we're going to do this. Let's try that. So I'll save it, select a project, click run. And uh, hopefully now, no matter what points I check, it's going to let us through. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. Checking pass points, and we're through to the, we've unlocked the application, we're through to the main activity. So the next step here in the third part of this video is going to be that we need to put the code actually in here that is actually going to check our pass points, the ones that the user just entered, against the ones that are currently in the database. And that's going to be in part three, which is coming right now. Welcome to part three of this video. So um, I've created uh, a copy of the project from last time so that I can give you all, all three steps here. And now what we need to do is we need to add some code that's going to be able to actually verify a set of pass points against the ones that are in the database. And to do that, we're going to use a bit of Pythagoras. Uh, so I'm going to go through this step by step. I'm going to refer to the code that I previously implemented because I want to make sure it's um, pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so um, that is that I previously implemented after I finished creating the whole course last time. Okay, so uh, I'm going to um, clear out the preferences from this project. Let's go to DDMS and um, navigate to the same location that I showed you before. So it's like data, data, and your um, package and shared preferences and just delete that. And I'll go back to the Java perspective here and uh, select the project and let's just run it. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I, might, I may as well run it because it's always good to run stuff. And so we should see that dialog coming up asking us to enter our set of pass points now at this point. So I click OK and uh, I'm going to very carefully click four points on this image that I'm going to remember. It says storing, and if we look at Eclipse, we should see that we've yeah, saved four points. Okay, so um, I'll go into this project here, and I'll go to the source, and uh, we need image activity verify pass points, and that's what we need to implement at that uh, at this point. So here in doing background, we need to get the points from the database. So we're going to have to get our list of saved points. Let's say here list point, um, I'll call it saved points, equals db.getPoints. And um, we've, we've also got our list of points that have just been touched. So this verified pass points is going to be running because the user's just touched four points. So let's call this uh, the argument to it. Let's call it touched points. So we've got touched points and we need to compare them to saved points. And the first thing I'd like to do here actually is let's just put a log.d in with uh, main activity dot debug tag because um, I just quite like to know that the points I've got out in the database have the right number in them. So let's say something like uh, loaded points and uh, saved points dot size. I just want to make sure that there are four of them. Uh, yeah, I need the semicolon here. Now, um, I see what I did originally was that I then checked that um, the number of points is correct, both for the saved points and the touched points. And I think really that's uh, possibly superfluous, but um, uh, well, uh, maybe it's good to do because um, I, I'm, I'm going to loop through each of these points and check how far away each touch point was from each save point. 
and I don't want to try to loop through an array that has the wrong number of entries in it. That should never happen. But um, it's sort of uh, some people would say this is defensive programming and that you shouldn't do it. But I, I feel more comfortable putting a check in here that both the save points and the touch points have the size that I expect. So I'm going to actually go to point collector here. And I'm going to give it a private static final int num underscore points, which I'll set to four, because I, I want to uh, refer to the number of points that we're using here in multiple places. And um, if I should decide to change that number, then uh, I, I wouldn't want to be picking through the code, looking for the number of four, looking for the number four, I'd want to change it in one place. In fact, I'm going to make that public so that we can access it from outside this class. And down here where I use the number four, I'm going to change that to num points. And that's the only place that I use it. So, um, so that's good. Okay, let's go back to image activity. And uh, let's say if, if saved points dot size is not four, so if save points dot size is not equal to four, or if uh, touch points dot size dot size is not equal to, yeah, sorry, not four. I should be using point collector dot num points. Okay. Or if touch points dot size is not equal to point collector dot num points, then either way, I've not got the number of points that I expected to be dealing with, and I'm going to return false. So returning false, uh, you'll recall, is going to give us that access denied message, and it's not going to unlock the main activity. Let's return true still at the bottom here. Now, uh, now what I can do is I'm going to loop through all my points, and if any of them are further away than a certain amount from the point that the user should have entered, then I'm going to return false. So let's loop through all these points. Let's say for int i equals naught. i less than, well, I have difficulty, yeah, sometimes, okay, yeah, i less than four. I have difficulty typing greater than brackets on this keyboard, but I can type less than brackets. So let's say if i less than point collector dot num points. Um, so if i equals not i less than point collector num points i plus plus. So it will loop as long as um, as long as i is zero, one, two, or three. And um, let's say here point saved point is equal to saved points dot get i. So we're going to tackle the points one by one, and then we'll say point touched point touched point equals touch points dot get i. Now, okay, let me check that I'm doing this the same way that I did it last time. Yeah. So now we can calculate the um, calculate the difference between these two points in terms of distance. Let's say int x diff and we're going to calculate how far away this particular point is horizontally how far away the point that the user touched to try to unlock the application is horizontally from the corresponding point that's been saved in the database so let's say x diff equals saved point dot x minus touched point x. It doesn't matter which we subtract from which because in a minute I'm going to square this in any case. So this tells us how far apart horizontally the touch point is from the save point. And we're going to say int y diff equals uh, saved point dot y minus uh, touched, touched point dot y. So um, remember, we've, we've got four points. We've saved four points already in the database. We want the user to touch those same four points in the same order, again, in order to be a, on, allowed into the rest of the application. So uh, we're going to check them one by one. So this particular point here, 
this tells us how far it is horizontally from that corresponding point that was saved in, data, in the database, and this is how far it is vertically. Now we want to know how far um, altogether the touched point is from the saved point, and uh, we, we could do something like adding x diff to y diff. That would probably work just fine. Uh, that would sort of, um, I guess, it would it would mean that as long as the touch point is within a sort of box of a given size, um, as long as both points are in that box, then we could say yeah, it's, it's close enough. And if they're not, then it's not. But I'll, I'll use Pythagoras' theorem here because if we've got a horizontal distance and a, vert and a vertical distance between two points. If we square the horizontal distance and add it to the vertical distance squared, then according to Pythagoras' theorem, that gives us the square of the total difference between those two points. So let's say here, int dist squared equals x diff times x diff plus y diff times y diff. So if you don't know trigonometry, don't worry about this. You could just add x diff to y diff um, or just like, you know, just uh, you could just use this without understanding it, but it gives us the difference between two points if you only know the kind of uh, horizontal and vertical distance or the distance north and the distance east, for example. This is the square of the actual difference between the uh, distance between those two points. Now, I, um, uh, we need some way of saying, uh, is, is this close enough or isn't it? And uh, I, I created like a value, yeah, which I call point closeness here. And by experimentation, I found that 40 seemed to be a good value there. So I'm going to go to the top of image activity and I'm going to say here, private static final int point underscore closeness equals 40. So we're going to say that if the, um, now did I check the square or actual point closeness itself? That's another question. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're going to say if the point is closer than 40 pixels, if the one that the user has touched is closer than 40 pixels to the one saved in the database, then we're going to say, yeah, that's close enough and they've touched the right point. If it's further away than that, we're going to fail them and say, no, you, you touched a different point. We can't expect them to touch the exact same point, which is why this rigmarole is necessary, because of course they're never going to be that accurate. So let's, let's scroll down here and go back to the stuff we are working on in Verify Pass Points. And um, I'm going to say here, if dist squared is greater than, and now I have trouble typing greater than on this keyboard because uh, it's a Hungarian keyboard and greater than conflicts with some shortcut in Eclipse, which is very annoying. So I can type less than in Eclipse or autocomplete greater than. Terrible palaver, but I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna copy that greater than sign. I'm gonna say if this squared is greater than point closeness, the actual distance times point closeness uh, because we're working with square distances here to avoid having to use square roots. So in other words, if the square of the distance is greater than 160 pixels, that's 40 squared, whoops, then, and um, yeah, get rid of caps lock there, we'll get there in the end. Then we're going to return false. So if, if any point that we encounter is further is further away than this from where we expected it to be according to the point saved in the database, we're going to say at that point, okay, this point's too far away, return false. But if, if none of the points are further away than they should be, then this will never return false. We'll get through all four points and finally we'll return true. And that will return true ultimately to here which will then run our main activity. So let's try it. I'll save all this. I'm just going to quickly check to see that I've not forgotten anything. I think I've got all the stuff that I implemented uh, last time I did this. So um, let's go to DDMS and uh, 
delete the preferences here so we can start from scratch and I'll go back to Java. If you have any problems with this, if it's not working, I strongly advise that you put a uh, kind of log.d in. In fact, let, let's do that anyway. Let's just, let's put a, a, um, some log output that outputs this disk word so we can see what it is. That's quite interesting. Let's say log.d main activity dot debug tag uh, distance squared is plus this squared. It's a really helpful thing to do to debug your application. And finally, I'm going to run this sucker and we'll see where we are. So let's let's take a look. Or maybe let's clear this debug stuff out, actually. I don't know why my debug tag um, isn't working here. Uh, something to do with using a Mac or I did something stupid. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, oh yeah, you know what? Um, I think Nathan gave me some code with his initials, as I recommended, and I'm using my initials here. Um, that's that's the problem. Um, so I won't worry about that. We'll just look at this. Okay, so let's let's go here and uh, enter the pass points. Yeah, I'll very carefully enter these again. Actually, so there we go, and it's storing. And now, if I enter the wrong ones, like just some wild, crazy ones here says access denied and if we look down here the distance squared is quite a big number um, so that's the square of the distance the square of the sum of the distances between each point that I touched versus each point that I should have touched now let's try it again with the right points which was this 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 and this and now it's it lets me into the next screen here and the sum of the squared distances is a mere 20 Okay, so um, so that looks good, and uh, that concludes this very long video. Uh, my sincere apologies to anyone who waded through the first video, which was shorter but extremely cryptic. I'm going to upload these workspaces along with this video, and uh, again, many many thanks to uh, Nathan who supplied me with his code that he had typed in up to tutorial twenty four. I think that's all I've got to say at this point. I don't want to miss anything out, but yeah, it's working. We're ready to go on to the next tutorial now. So um, that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.